Good day, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Lanfrica Talks. I'm your host, Chris Emezwe. And for those who are new, Lanfrica Talks provides a platform to share diverse voices across an array of subjects like AI, linguistics, and data governance. Our vision is to amplify underrepresented voices in AI and establish an accessible online repository of knowledge for these important but often neglected areas. Subscribe to our podcast and YouTube channel for more talk shows. Today we have our wonderful guest, Favor James. Favor James is a dedicated and forward-thinking individual with a profound passion for data science, machine learning, and artificial intelligence. Favor has experience in building machine learning projects from data gathering to the model development stage with a particular interest in applying artificial intelligence to healthcare. Favor is also an open source enthusiast, participating in events like Hacktoberfest, as well as serving as a Google Summer of Code intern. As well, she's actively involved in tech communities, especially in helping women in tech. Favor is currently seeking opportunities in software engineering machine learning, and technical writing. In her free time, you can find Favor reading crime novels and watching mystery or crime documentaries. You have a very interesting profile, Favor. I love the work you're doing in terms of, yeah, in terms of empowering women. I love the work you're doing in artificial intelligence and healthcare. And I cannot wait to hear what you have to offer to us. We're very happy to have you, Favor, and the floor is yours. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Favor James. It's really nice to be here giving this talk on um a project I recently participated in from the month of um, May to September. Okay, so I'm a data scientist. I'm also a student at Upper Femme University studying electronics and electrical engineering. And I recently participated in Google Summer of Code under the National Resource for Network Biology. So, yeah. The project I did during this period was um titled um, um creating a Python geometric data set for graph neural networks and prediction, but um it's pretty long, so I just shortened it here. So yeah, the title of this talk is going to be generating Python geometric data set for graph neural networks. So yeah, I'm going to get into it now. So um Okay, so um, millions of people actually die from cancer worldwide, and um, this project is, um, was done in order to try to understand the biological mechanisms that actually result in some individuals outliving the others. So um, machine learning, mainly um, normal neural network models can help identify patterns in patient data. But um, graph neural networks help us to identify um, the patterns in um, bio known biological network data. So like in order to um, help with these models, in order to help with such graph neural network predictive models that we can use to understand the relation in biological network data that, that helps some, some people with cancer outlive other people with the same cancer that is why we did this project. So this project was to um, help create a data set that integrated two different sources of data sets. The pathway commons, the pathway commons is a database that contains biological networks. Lysibel portal is a data hub that contains cancer patient data. So we we aimed to integrate these two um, data sets from these two um, portals in order to create a data that can be used for um, Python geometric in order to predict cancer patient um, viral survival. So um, um, this is it. Um, take for example, we have two patients that were diagnosed with, let's say, breast cancer, and they were diagnosed at the same time, and we discovered that one lives for three months, the other lives for one year. Why is this so? So with this data, and the reason why um, this data was created is so that um, from the data sets, the cancer data on the civil portal contains the features of the um, patients, like um, time of diagnosis, different features, a lot of features, which uh, 
um, you, it can be seen there. Why the parts of commons just contain the genes that, that are present in um, the human body and the connections. So these genes are common to like all the patients. These genes are common to every cancer patient, no matter, no matter the type of cancer. But the connections between these genes are different like for each of the patients. And that is why this data was set was created to help um, those people that are um, researchers and people into network biology and cancer research to maybe help them to understand what actually happens, what connections is between one that makes someone to outlive the other. Maybe from here, we can able to um, create maybe um, treatment plans and things that can help people to live long with cancer. So this data was um, done for people that already actually have the cancer. So yeah. So um, what are graph neural networks? Graph neural networks are um, a recent class of deep learning methods that are used to perform inference on graph data. So graphs can be used to, we can use graph to model real world phenomena such as transportation, we can use it for um, social networks and um, for like, um, like recommendation engines and biological networks. So graphs are structured whereby the number of nodes is variable and GNS are also used to learn node embeddings through um, aggregation of information from connected neighbors of a node. So in this project, like I said before, we made use of two main databases. Pathway Commons is an aggregated database that contains millions of molecular interactions. Passable Portal is from um, for cancer genomics. It's a database that contains um, cancer genomics data collected from over 200 studies. So it had the the ACC, the um, the, the um, breast cancer, yes, a lot of cancer, pancreatic cancer, different cancer studies, and the patient information. So each patient in our from our CBL portal data set, they are represented by a graph where the nodes stand for the genes and the edges represent the connections between these genes or between the nodes. And the node values or like the node features are provided by the genomics data civil portal why the edges that's like the connections between these nodes is what we get from the pathway commons so um what are the key features of um um dns like i said neighbor aggregation and um weight sharing so um um the idea behind um neighbor aggregation now is that um during each day of the DNA, information from neighboring nodes is aggregated or collected. Like this aggregation can be average form or even complex operations of the neighbor's information. And um, the idea is that by gathering and integrating information from these neighbors, each node can get a more comprehensive and um, richer representation that captures the local neighbor's, um, the local neighbor's attributes. Sorry. Okay. So um also when I mean by weight sharing, like traditional neural networks, they have different weights for different parts of the input. So, but in graph neural network, we use like the same weights for each of the nodes, regardless of their position or order in the graph. So and this ensures um consistency for the graph and um the output of the JNN does not change even when the order of nodes changes. That is one issue that um made people um start using graph neural networks. In um normal neural networks, there's no a lot of consistency and the output can change when it changes. But for graph neural networks, there's consistency among all the nodes since we are using the same weight. So why do we use graph neural networks? They can capture complex patterns in data where their relationships are crucial and they bridge the gap between deep learning and structured data which is a robust tool for numerous applications. We have different applications of um, GNS, like social network analysis for recommendation systems. GNS are also used for recommendation systems, like, like for um, maybe Netflix or Spotify. Like you can, you can visualize it using a graph where there's a connection between um, two, okay, let's say we have Ada and Bolu. If two of them have watched something, there's the possibility that this will also watch this. So like, we can realize that with the graph and there's a relationship, the relationship between the two of them or between the two things that they're doing is very crucial. So that is why like graph neural networks coming um, for biology, discovering patterns in molecular structures, predicting protein interactions, then for transportation, for finance, for detection, for detection by um, analyzing transaction networks and also knowledge graphs. So, um, 
the main project goals, like I said, was to create a data set for Python geometric that used cancer patient genomics and survival data to describe the graph structure for the genomics data and to develop an example model using the developed data set. So the goal of the um data set was to use to predict the overall survival. That is like how long a person will live after the person has been diagnosed um, with cancer. So to predict how long a patient will live after the person will be diagnosed with cancer. That was what, so this was the um methodology that I followed during the project. You can see um, the first block shows the data retrieval and preprocessing. I'm going to go into it in the next slide. Then the data integration process, then the modeling, which is the, um, the final stage. So yeah, so in my, during my project, I made use of, I worked with two data sets, but um, I was only able to contribute one data set to PyTorch Geometric, which was the, uh, the breast cancer data set. I contributed the breast cancer data set to PyTorch Geometric, and it has been accepted because of, it was larger than the um, adrenocortical carcinoma data set. The adrenocortical um, data set had only 78 patients, while the breast cancer had 1,082 patients. And, okay, so after downloading this data set from CBL portal, we were able to also um, download the pathway commons data set and we had to like extract genes because the pathway commons like contains all the genes, but it's not all that are actually present for these cancers. So we just had to extract the ones that overlapped with the pathway commons so that like we can have similar genes. So um, I'm going to show the notebook where I did the preprocessing just for you to um, have a brief understanding of what I'm saying. So um, this is the first data set that was downloaded. This data clinical patient contains the information of the patient's data and just got it from the CBL portal. Then data clinical sample is also another data that contains information. Then this is one that shows the genes, then the pathway commons data. So um, yeah, I showed, I just read in the data, we could see the different features that each of the um, data sets contains, the different features for each of the data sets, then normal data processing of cleaning it. Then the next one was to read in the data clinical patient's data. I can see like different things that are there, the sex, the patient's weight, overall survival status, overall survival months, which this is what we're trying to predict, the overall survival months and um, progress free, just different things. And I also viewed that then the next thing I did, because we wanted to make this as basic as possible, I dropped all these other features, given that my the mentor of the project wanted me to do something very basic at first, to even like see if we'll be able to get a result using something very basic. So we dropped all the all the, all these features about the patient, and we only um, took note of the overall survival, how long the patient lived, then the patient identifier and the stamp identifier. They're the same thing, just to identify the patient. So this is the next data set. This one contains the the patient and their node features, like the input node features of each of the nodes. So this Ugo symbol stand as like it also means nodes. So those are like the chains. And each of these numbers like add like the features of the um node for each of the patients. So okay, this is like the final, this is what the final stuff looks like. Where this CCGA stands for like the patient identifier, and each of these are like the different nodes that were present in this data set. So the next thing now was to um undo the um integrate the pathway commons data. So this is how the pathway commons data looks like. It just has the source and the target, and it has interaction type. I dropped the interaction type because we didn't like need to know the type of interaction that is between. We just wanted to have the source and the target. But the similar one between the pathway commons and the data set created here was just around 9,614. So we did some preprocessing to merge the two of them together and to have a final data set, which this is. It. So this is the final data set that was used for our modeling. And okay, so I'm going to go back to this slide now. So after doing that, um, 
this data set were uploaded to Zenodo. Zenodo is a site used for putting your um, research data sets, journals, anything that like you want to have easy access to and you want other people to also have access to. So um, I had graph IDS, graph labels, and age index. So graph IDS is like the gene features of the patient. Graph labels is the the what we're trying to predict the overall survival, then the age index was gotten from the pathway hormones. So, okay, what is age index? Age index is like what shows the connections between the nodes and we generated it from pathway commons, which um, okay, which we can see here. This was where I um, worked on creating the age index. To create the end index, I made use of um, Python Geometric. That is the main library that was used in this project. So um, it's just like um, connecting the target to the node and getting like the number, the number of like the nodes. We're going to use it for the graph data when combining our graph features and the graph label, then the edge index to understand the connections between the node and the targets that are present in like our CBAO portal data. So yeah, this was when we did the data integration. Like I said, after creating the edge index, the next thing that I did, which I'm going to show the notebook for, was to um generate a list of graphs. So not a graph transmission tags. This means that we had to um generate a list of graphs from our data set. Then these data types were um integrated together, and then we wrapped it using a class called a memory data set class that is a function on the PYG. Um, we have to do this so that it can be um, compatible with Python geometric and we can make use of the Python geometric library to actually build our GNA. So yeah, I showed, this notebook shows the integration process and this is a um, class I talked about, the memory data set class, which is used to like wrap the whole process together such that once I just call this class, I get a result. So these are the um, data sets that was people says that were uploaded to the node. We had to um, include the link so you can download it from it. This is the result I want to get. The data, I want to get a graph data. The data that was uploaded to the node at first is just a normal CSV data and the um, the um, edge index of the from pathway commons. So when we integrate the two of them together, I want to make it one big graph data that contains the graph features, the graph labels, and the edge index. And so this um, class is what we what we used to do all that and connect everything together so that it can be one like one huge data object. So like each of it now, each of the patient data is like contains the X, which is like the graph feature, contains the edge index, which is shown here, then the Y, which is the label, which is like the overall survival time of that patient. And we had a list of graphs. So we had 1,082 graphs based on, because we had 1,082 patients. There was also a something called predefined split, a method that was um, defined in this um, class so that um, we don't have to um, call in a different splitting method to split data during um, training. So you just have to define the indices that you're interested in or any random index and you will get the data set. So this is what the data set looks like. This is what one of the data looks like. This is the, like the node features. Nine to eight, eight is like the amount of nodes, then one, for one patient, then this is the age index, and then this is the label, one label. Then you can see the way it looks like, the way the age index looks like here, and you can see the um label, which is 47. That is like, 47.6 stands for like 47 months, like 47 and a half months. So like, this is what's represented in months. And then the node features of the patient, which is all this year, and then the age index, which is this year. So now doing this, this format is accepted by Python Geometric. Python Geometric is the library that uh, we're going to be using to build our genes. So now that we have done our data set like this, now that I did my data set like this, I'm able to proceed with building a graph neural network. So, okay, yeah, I was talking about, um, I just, after um, creating the data sets, I added everything to the notebook. Then I created a pull request to contribute this data set to um, 
Python's geometric and it, the pull request got program, it got merged. And now if you go to the PyTorch geometric site, I don't know if I'm going to have a chance to do that to be able to see the data set that was um created. Okay. So So yeah, this is the data set that I contributed that now is accessible to anybody to use it for whatever you want to use it for, to test anything out or to build a graph neural network on the Python geometric site. Okay, let's go back to the slide. So after, um. We're done with um, the data set and the processing and ensuring it's in a format accepted by Python geometric. The next thing that we moved on to do was our modeling. So the first thing, the first model we tried out was normal um, machine learning model using auto ML. So we made use of the first library for um, automated machine learning. I made use of the first library for um, automated machine learning. And um, The performance was pretty low, given the fact that um this was a graph data, we're using graph data to um we're using a neural network to uh, work on a graph data. So the MS was pretty low. I'm going to show it like when we get to a certain part. Then the next thing after doing that was to um try out our GNN model. The first GNN model I tried out was a graph convolutional network. So um we developed it for both the ACC and the RCA, the breast cancer data, but um the only one that I'm going to so GCNs are a class of um, deep learning architectures that deal out for um, processing graph structure data. So they effectively learn patterns and relationships within the like intricate networks of these biological data. And this is like the structure. If you notice, it's almost like the same structure with a normal like convolutional net neural network, but just in this case, our input is like the graph data, so like the node features and each of the patients. So this is how this was me just downloading the data set from Zenodo. Now, given this, anyone can run this notebook easily without having to have the data set on your drive or the household of that. So this was me calling the edge index and Okay, yeah, I was generating these patient specific graphs, like each graph for each patient. And we created both the um train test and validation. So um we had the graph train, the graph test, the graph vowel. So okay, yeah, I was just looking at um the structure of the data set to see that it actually looks like what I want it to look like. So the next thing to do was to convert it to the data objects. You have to convert it to data object to be able to use it with um, PyTorch geometric because uh, a data object just wraps the whole graph into one. So it makes it like a whole, like the data train now is a list of graphs where it's like one object. So like I can just call it per index, like what I did here. I just did sample because the data train I call, I wanted to get the first data object and it shows me the node features, the edge index and the overall survival time in months of that particular patient. So the next thing to do was to create badges. Given the large size of the data set, number one will be um this um notebook would have to run on um a GPU. Also, um I tried out the batch size 32 and 16, but I kept running out of memory. So that is why I um settled on eight because uh, it was pretty large. And its graph data is not just normal um, data, CSV data. So it consumes more memory. And yeah, you have to define the forward function. I don't know, can you still hear me? Yeah, you zoned that for a bit, but you're back. Okay, yeah, because my, it was showing um, unstable internet connection. Okay, so um, this is where I define the um the class, the GCN model class, and this is where we use it to actually train our model. So um, I wanted to take note of how long my model takes to run for just for um keeping statistics to understand which models long run longer than which. In 
then to get the um laws and then to evaluate the data. So I will just go to the ending where hopefully it shows how long my model took to run. It took around 2,700 seconds to run. And then I'm going to go to the prediction. Yeah, this was me showing the making predictions on using the model that was um, already trained. Then the MSC was around 957, which is pretty high, but it was way better than what we got from the um, baseline modeling um that I first of all showed. I don't know, I don't think I showed the um, notebook for that. I'm going to show it later. And yeah, I just like, we just saw the convergence. Like this stuff shows that my model was actually overfitting. But because of time, we didn't really have a lot of time to um, perform a parameter tuning and do a lot of tuning on it. So we just let it as this. Since the main goal of this project was to actually create a data set. So like open that with time and, and more time, we're able to like see how to like actually make our model perform better. So, okay. I want to um show us what I also got for the the um, baseline model so we could see the MSC score. Why that looks, let's go to the next one. So the next GNN model that was tried out was graph attention network. So what is the between um, graph attention network and GCN? So the difference is that a graph attention network is like a GCN that has an attention layer. So this okay, so this was the MSC of the model used with um deep neural network. It was around one thousand or something, but when compared to this, this was around nine fifty seven. So yeah, like we expected, we expected it to perform better, and it actually performed better than the neural network. We didn't expect it to even like perform at all, but it gave a performance that was really really bad. So okay. So the graph attention network that we tried out also performed way better than the GCN. And this is because like this gave um, more attention to important neighbors. Like it captured the relationships between the nodes better. The GCN does not have an attention layer. It's just a normal graph correlation network. But for the GAT, it's the combination of a graph correlation network, but it now has an attention layer. So the same steps were carried out, but I'm just going to go to the modeling aspect where I show the graph attention network. So yeah, so I the MSC for the graph attention network was around nine sixteen. It's not as good as we would have wanted it to be, but it was way better than the um graph correlation network. So um the next thing was the result. So um like I said before during the talk, the GAT performed better than both the flat ML, that is the normal neural network, and the um the GCN and we created a table that shows the um statistics of like how many data was used for training, how many was used for testing, and the result gotten, which this is so we can see that um for the breast cancer data of the FLA ML, it ran for around 303 seconds, and the MSC was about 1,225. The one for the GCN ran for around 2,600 seconds. We used the 60-20-20 split ratio, and the MSC was around 957. Then for the GAT, which is also graph attention network, it was around 3,800 seconds. Then we also used 60-20-20, and the MSC was 916. So um, during the course of my GSOC project, I was blogging about the process of my um, project every week and I published them on, link on Medium. So you can feel free to go there and also check it out to read about um, any of the weeks. And also I presented the project as a poster in um, two events, Data Science Nigeria and Deep Learning in Dava, and the poster actually won an award in the both events. So yeah, thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Favor, for this presentation. It's been 
very interesting to learn about the work that you have done. I like that you are you you, you did two things.